Greetings fellow fans of football, welcome back to Football Therapy with me your host Jan, I hope you lot are doing oh so well and welcome to today's video which is a match preview of Chelsea's game against the Toon, yes at Kent's Newcastle, if you don't know who the Toon are, Premier League football is back, it's exciting. Not that I don't like the international break. I don't really like the international break. But like everyone, I'm elated. Premier League football is coming back to my eyes. And this is quite a decent fixture for Chelsea. At home against Newcastle. Chelsea are in good form. Newcastle have just come off beating Manchester United. But that's not saying much. Yes, myself, like many, are enjoying slagging off Manchester United at the moment. But will Steve Bruce's long staff revolution continue into this fixture? against Chelsea or can Chelsea do the business and hopefully leave the game having an emphatic win. Wow, I structured that sentence slowly and poorly. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting game and we're going to preview the sugar out of this game in this video. Before we do get into the preview, I do want to remind you to subscribe to Football Therapy as I upload content daily, Chelsea content. And you know what, if you're a Chelsea fan, even if you're not, you should subscribe because you might enjoy it. Okay, okay, okay. Big game. Well, kind of big. Big game for Chelsea because it means they can continue their good run of form. Tammy Abraham can hopefully bag another goal or two. Basically, the players that were playing well for Chelsea before the international break and indeed continue good form into the international break can use this opportunity to settle themselves back into the Premier League. No disrespect to Newcastle fans, but after the international break, this current Newcastle side at home is just the tonic, isn't it? Like I said, they're not quite in the crisis they were a few weeks ago with the whole, you know, Rafa leaving, Steve Bruce coming in, they generally looking terrible. Brucey has done a few bits, they've put out a couple of results. I mean, they beat Man United and Tottenham, but both of those teams look like they're struggling still. They can basically do some stuff sometimes. But the onus is absolutely on Chelsea Football Club to get all three points at Stamford Bridge this weekend. If they don't, it will be crisis at Chelsea yet again. Regardless to Chelsea being in good form across multiple different competitions, anything but a win here, you know. Yeah. I want to talk about potential formations and how the teams are going to line up. So let's open that analysis page. Boom. Here is the lineup that Steve Bruce sent out last time against Minnow's Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. So, he did play an incredibly negative, pragmatic system, but it worked. Obviously, he had the Longstaff bros playing in midfield. It's a feel-good story, and Matty Longstaff does look like a player, but whether he can continue that in all other games in the Premier League, I don't know. But 5-4-1 generally is quite a negative defensive formation and you would back Steve Bruce to do the exact same thing at Stamford Bridge. Now, they will be a rigid, organised team and hard to break down. Five along the back and to be honest, if Joel Linton isn't hanging up front by himself, out of possession, it could become 11 men behind the ball. But with the Longstaff brothers playing in midfield, which I expect them both to play again, on transition, I know Chelsea have got better on transition recently um, and playing about the ball, but if they haven't tightened that up still, the Longstaff playing in Joel Linton, and he is a player, let's have it right, and they spent a lot of money on him and it's not a waste of money. He's probably went to that club knew, knowing he's gonna be starved of service. And, you know, if that's the case. But with the bros in midfield combining and throwing in some half-decent service to Joel Linton, Chelsea could concede goals, essentially. And obviously, there's the main Achilles heel that I always talk about on this channel of the set-piece defending, which still very much is a problem for Chelsea. And if they commit people to set-piece routines, Chelsea are as vulnerable as ever in terms of defending set pieces. Dubravka is a good goalkeeper and Jamal Lascelles is a good centre-back. Don't really have any more to say about the lineup. I mean, they'll play compact, they'll play five along the back, they'll make it difficult, and if Chelsea get frustrated and the mood gets funny around Stamford Bridge, they'll fancy their chances to do something on the break. But hopefully not. Right then, how are Chelsea going to line up in this game? Now, I'm recording this video before Frank Lampard's presser, but I've read some stuff about who potentially is available. So let's switch the graphic over to my speculated Chelsea formation. Whoosh. <laughs> right, it's gonna be a back five and a middle bank of four. 
uh, defensive system from Steve Bruce's Newcastle. Therefore, Frank Lampard will have to be creative and play an attacking formation to unlock that fortress. And Frank Lampard will go for his favoured 4-2 Three, one formation. He will play his golden boy trio of Fikad Samori, Mason Mount, and Tammy Abraham. That's spying up the pitch. Obviously, Kepa Aditha Balaga will play. Apparently, N'Golo Kante is fit to play again, and I would expect to see him in this game unless he's being wrapped in cotton wool. But the truth is, even if he's nursing like a little niggly injury and needs to go over, the dude needs to play. You can't just throw him into big games. So I expect Jorginho and N'Golo Kante in a double pivot behind the number 10 Mason Mount, who's behind Tanny Abraham, Callum hudson Doy to start and yet another game play on the left and also Willian to play on the right. Fullback positions are a bit interesting. I do see Azpilicueta starting over Reese James again. I, I, I'm confident that Reese James will become the starting right back by the end of the season. Um, unless Azpilicueta just keeps putting in stellar performances. The moment he slips, Reese James is coming in. And really the interesting thing is left back. Alonso has been very good coming into left back. I mean, he's generally been very poor as a left back for Chelsea. Not a left wing back, a left back. But he deserves props for, for coming in for the injured Emerson and doing well. If Emerson's fit, he'll come back in, I think probably although that might be a little bit harsh on Alonso because I think this whole meritocracy thing with Lampard he'll probably see Alonso has been playing well and he might feel bad just to cut him out but if Emerson's fit I think he'll probably come back in oh yeah and I think Antonio Rudiger is going to partner for Kyle Tomori in the centre-back positions and in terms of sub appearances to come on who knows I reckon Batshuayi to come on for Abraham if he gets a goal and maybe maybe Rhys James or someone in midfield who knows we'll see what happens depending on how the game goes this game is going to be heavily dependent on Chelsea breaking down that stubborn defence of Newcastle so it's going to be but playing between the lines will be very, very difficult. And, you know, Willian, uh, Mount, hudson Adoy, they will look to play between the lines, but they, again, might find it difficult. So it's very much going to have to probably look a little bit too Sarismo, sorry ball to try and play vertical tiki taka to coax Newcastle out. But you know what? It's going to be very difficult to try and coax that team out. So there's going to need to be a lot of switches of play in terms of crossing the ball over the park, try and find the space. And then darty little players like hudson Adoy and Mason Mount will hopefully combine and find spaces. And Tammy Abraham is going to have a hard time, I think, in this game. But I'm still actually backing him to score a goal, even though this will be a stern test for him. Right, let's talk a little bit more about the game and get rid of this analysis screen. Right, right, right. So, Steve Bruce will sort of see us a little bit as a free hit, but he will be buoyed by how they performed at Old Trafford. And he'll feel like, you know what? I know United are probably in a worse place than Chelsea at the moment. Moment, but we could probably still do the same thing to Chelsea. He'll basically back himself to try and score on set pieces. He'll try and conserve energy off the ball, and even though that's difficult, and absolutely try and hit Chelsea on the break. One thing he'll think is, Liverpool like to play with the ball like Chelsea, but Liverpool are so, so good defending uh, on transition, which Chelsea are not. He'll think, right, we can get them. There is a chance here. And with that positivity, especially after that Manchester United game, they'll have a good feeling going into this game, or at least as good as a feeling you can have coming to this to Stamford Bridge to play this current Chelsea side. From a Chelsea perspective, like I said, they're on a good run of form across all competitions. There's a general feel-good factor and an absolute, probably monstrous hunger to get back into it and keep performing, you know, the likes of Tammy and Golden Boy um, nominated Mason Mount. They probably both fancy to score, fancy themselves to score in this game. Probably no one more than Hudson Odoi. He'll be gagging for a Premier League goal. He's absolutely got the quality. He scored those two monstrous goals for England under 21s, and he'll be like, "Bang! I'm going to do that in the Premier League against Newcastle at home. Why the hell not?" And he may well do. And remember, when opposition teams are defending in a low block. <laughs> They seem to be making this recurring mistake of letting Kante have the ball 20 yards out and often he takes a shot and scores whether it's a deflection or a worldie. So teams need to start wising up to N'Golo Kante because he's long been that player of like, oh yeah, you can let him have the ball that far out. You mark everyone else. But, you know, there could be that kind of goal that breaks the deadlock or who knows? A Fakai Tomori rocket from 30 yards again to break the deadlock and open them up a little bit. I want to echo the sentiment how I do think this would be a tough game for someone like Tammy Abraham. Hopefully I'm proved wrong immediately and he scores in the first 5-10 minutes. But I feel like a big tall striker like him playing against a, uh, a narrow block with loads of opposition defenders, I feel like he might 
struggle. I'm not saying he's a bad striker in terms of like wriggling and you know getting a shot off, but he has been good being mobile this season, running on the shoulder, you know, moving defenders about, and I think they're going to be very rigid and probably quite savvy and stuff, so that might be difficult for the young English striker. Who knows, maybe not. I hope he just scores early, but I do back him to get a goal. Which brings me on to my score prediction. I think Newcastle are going to be d defensively resolute in this game, but I think Chelsea are irresistible at the moment, and I feel like Chelsea can break them. I feel like they might not score in the first hour even, but I think once Chelsea do get a goal, they'll get one or two more. Now, I always like to be a little bit cautious in my predictions. I don't want to be too ambitious, but I genuinely think Chelsea can win this game comfortably and handsomely, and I want Chelsea to win. <laughs> 3-0. That's my prediction for this game. I think Chelsea are going to beat Newcastle at home 3-0, keep a clean sheet, maybe concede a couple of chances, make a couple of naive mistakes, as Chelsea do at the moment, but hopefully get away with them and get a nice handsome scoreline and keep climbing that Premier League table. But what do you lot think? I want to hear it. Get down in the comments below and let me know your score predictions, goal scorers, do you think Chelsea are going to concede? Let me know in the comments below and if you have enjoyed today's content please do like the video, remember to subscribe if you are new and a reminder you can join the Football Therapy Discord server if you check out the Patreon link in the description. Uh, come chat to me and the rest of the GOAT gang, also follow me on social media at Football Yannick on Twitter and Instagram at Football Yannick. Yeah so I'll do a match review after the game, enjoy the football, I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby